time to do it. Okay. Uh, you talked originally about living in that survival state. Mm -hmm. Well, the chemicals of survival force the body to turn on syst certain systems yeah. that cause us to act like pretty much animals with big brains. In survival, we're concerned about three things. Mm -hmm. The body, the environment, and time. How I look, what's going on in my life, how much time I have. We obsess. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Our focus becomes very single-minded, object-focused. Okay. And it's that type of action that causes people to think very selfishly. Mm -hmm. They're elbowing their way into life, or they're holding on by repeating a thought enough in their mind of something that happened years ago mm -hmm. that we obsess. And the chemicals of, the, of those survival states are very self-limiting. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're in a state of creation, there is no body. Mm -hmm. There is no thing. There is no time. You are in an expanded state where you're seeing possibility and potential. Different chemistry that's created and we see a different landscape as a result of our creations. We fall in love with what we're doing. We fall in love with the moment. We're present. A whole different scenario uh, in the human condition. <clears throat> now, most people spend the majority of their day living in survival. The side effect of those chemicals are things like anger and aggression, fear, anxiety, pain, suffering, time. And it's those chemicals that begin to break the body down or dysregulate or downregulate the genes. So <coughs> the first thing that people have to do is to learn information. Mm -hmm. You have to learn information because as you learn new knowledge and new information, the embracing of that information actually causes new circuits to form in the brain. And now those new circuits act as the raw materials to say, how, what piece of philosophy that I just mm -hmm. learned from that book that I read that I could actually apply to this situation? Could I abandon the habit of how I would typically respond and begin to respond a different way here? Now, the key to that is that the person has to actually begin, mm -hmm. after they learn that information, to sit down, no longer allow the environment to control their thinking, close mm -hmm. their eyes. Mm -hmm and begin to plan their actions because the reminder of how they're going to act, the planning of their yeah. behaviors, actually prepares the brain ahead of the experience. Okay. Now we have the hardware in place to use when that same situation comes up and uh, we want to respond differently. Mm -hmm. So that process of rehearsal and meditation, it's the same thing. The mystics knew this. Mm -hmm. and, um, in, in, the, in a lot of the work that I do, I talk about how the brain, the mind, and body could actually change ahead of the experience. And when that happens, then we are ready. We already had the experience, which means we're prepared for anything. So the key then, after we learn information, is to th think about how we're going to apply this. What do I have to change about myself? How could I do it differently? You ask mm -hmm. those frontal lobe questions. Mm -hmm. And when we're coming up with solutions, the brain is actually forcing neurons to fire in different sequences and different patterns and different combinations. We're making a new mind. If we do it enough times, we can remind ourselves how we're going to be in yeah. that moment. And so when we get to that process of doing, and we restrain our impulsive behaviors and at the same time apply something that's so foreign to us, and we experience joy or compassion or love because we understood for a moment what that person was experiencing instead of judging them. That new experience makes a new feeling, and we say, that feels a lot better I can than go that other. Yeah. Now, yeah. can I do it again? Mm -hmm. Can I repeat it? Now, I think the biggest difficulty in, in our culture, the Western world, and now around the world, I would say, is making the time to do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. It's just making the time to do it. And, and, and making it a priority. Yeah, making the time and make it, making it important. Mm -hmm. I think by the time we're in our 30s, you know, and we've, we've uh, embraced a lot of our experiences and what life has to offer, there comes a moment where people want more, mm -hmm. you know, and one, one person may want more things, and the other person may want more joy and more love because they realize that nothing is going to bring that to them. So when we begin to erase and we begin to eliminate some of the afflictive states of mind and body that we that we tend to think are normal, there's a bleed through of mm -hmm. that mind. And when 
when that mind starts to press through us, that information field, you know, I think the whole purpose in life is to express that mind. And when we allow ourselves to express that greater order, <coughs> and the side effects of that are joy and love and, and, and compassion and understanding and inspiration. That's the natural state of being, I think, that every human being, you know, should live by. Yeah, I was just about to say, should be. 